we are live. How's it going, everybody? We are 24 hours out from the big kerfluffle, I suppose. Um, boy, have I got some stuff to talk about today. Can you all hear me okay? <clears throat> all right. Hello, Deb. How you doing? There's Dave, Heather Tucker, Smiley Kylie, Heather Brown, one of my modestes, Dean Johnson. Hashtag Jane Things. Cool. <laughs> All right, Enzo, my man. Tommy Baker, the rock, the mainstay. And just Deb, I do believe I said hi to you. Case closed with CJ. How you doing, Michelle Abbott? Terry Labeth, Robin B. I am very well, Robin. Thank you. Freeze dry it. Beyond the evidence, how's it going? Um, as you see, the, uh, title of the, uh, of the live stream today is missed me, missed me. Now you gotta kiss me. I always say, you know, the next thing I expect from, uh, some of these people is the nan and boo boo stick your head in doo doo attack. Um, that's about the level of uh, maturity that I'm dealing with these days. Um, I'm going to be as honest as I can be, as straightforward and honest. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to tell you, okay? <laughs> you don't have to believe me. That's the great thing about America. You don't have to believe me. Hey, sweet pea. Um, <clears throat> you know, we have a situation yesterday that a lot of people are talking about, but it seems like for every 200 people that are talking about it, Two of them were there. Um, I would be one of those two in any conversation. <laughs> and I can tell you what it was like being there. And I can tell you, hey, Jason, I can tell you that no matter what I did, I was not getting back in that courtroom after lunch. Okay. You got to understand. I went up and asked, this was the sequence of events after lunch, because everywhere I went, I felt the eyes on me, everywhere. Guys, the documentary came out, you know, they know pretty much where I stand now. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> when all of this happened yesterday, right before lunch, I thought, okay, Something ain't right here. I'm not getting back in this courtroom after lunch. So I went up and I asked Hennessy. I said, are they going to let me testify? He said, no. So I said, okay, goodbye. <laughs> so I turned around and I talked to Kathy for a little bit, Kathy Allen. And she said, oh, are you leaving? And I said, one way or another. <laughs> um, they, uh, I could tell they were following me at a certain distance. And when Gambies took me away from the situation where Noe was like, you know, um, and I was like, hey, Noe. See, guys, the whole, everybody says, oh, he started a disturbance in the courthouse. No, I didn't. The disturbance happened afterwards, outside. Because at that point, I knew I wasn't going to be testifying. Hey, Melissa, I knew I wasn't going to be um, staying in the courtroom for the rest of the day. So I decided I am going to go after Noe. D guys, did I say, did I or did I not say, stay away from me? I warned him. Repeatedly. Now, you go see certain people talking and they'll say, hey, Cleo, what's up? Hey, Frosty. They'll say, um, oh, well, Snay was clearly the, the aggressor. You know, Snay followed him around all day. Strike that, reverse it. He followed me all day. Okay. And I did not talk for two days about what I was going to do. No, I talked for two days telling Noe that if he did what he said he was going to do, 
Guys, I put up a video. Clearly shows Noe talking about what his plans were for that day. And you can see at the end of that video, I put up another video that shows Noe being aggressive and belligerent to two people, knocking on the window of their car, saying, fuck you, fat ass, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, Cleo, yeah, about that. Um, I, I think Noe recently got his bracelet off. That means he doesn't have to take the drug tests anymore. And I think he's using again. I really do. Um, you can hear it when you listen to him. He's, he's manic. He's all keyed up and everything. Hey, Alice. He's just, you know. Yeah. Exactly, Dean Johnson. It was no surprise what Noe was planning. No surprise. Hey, hybrid, how's it going? I uh, I think I can announce that hybrid is uh, going to be joining our mod team. Is this correct, hybrid? Have you accepted my offer? <laughs> um, let me see if I uh, see if I got a response in the one there. You see, guys. Um, uh, Honeybee is stepping down um, and not, there's no friction. She's stepping down with my blessing. I did not ask her to. Um, she is making that decision because it's just, it, it, it can get to be too much. And she has done a remarkable job, remarkable job. And I thank her so much. I love you. I love you, girl. I always will. Um, even though you're not my wife. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but thank you for your for what you've done. Look what you did. Look what look what you did. Um, so anyway, uh, hybrid will be coming on uh, into my team, and um, I like everybody everybody where they are right now. I like my street team where they are, um, and I've got some plans for guitarista and everything. Um, Sam is still quite new. Alice is, uh, you know, having some uh, challenges right now. So um, I am announcing now that I have given Honey or a Hybrid Pisces uh, my number one mod position. Um, I have to get you a wrench here if I can. <laughs> um, she it will be, uh, as I call my number one. Um, and she'll be the one putting up the links and so forth and take doing the stuff that Honeybee used to do. Um, Gail, and, uh, Gail and Rose, of course, are my street team. Um, Rose runs the uh, Facebook group for me. And um, <clears throat> I think we're going to be just fine. I don't think we're going to miss a beat. Hybrid seems to know what she's doing on uh, um, Patreon, which brings me to my next point here. <laughs> um we will be starting a Patreon. Now, this Patreon is going to allow us to have a full week of content and different uh, themes and so forth. The, the Patreon is basically going to be, it's going to be called Where Context is King. And everything we talk about, we're going to bring it back around to the importance of context and critical thinking. We'll have one day for my favorite idea that I've been pushing around for a while now, uh, my Mount Rushmore, where each episode is going to be about, like, say, my Mount Rushmore of bass players, my Mount Rushmore of uh, um, actors, you know, um, football players, quarterbacks, uh, you know, stuff like that. And we'll have it'll be all different kinds of stuff, you know, my my Mount Rushmore of game show show hosts or whatever. And we will be talking about it. Um, and each, like I said, each week it'll be something different. Um, and you'll know ahead of time what it's going to be so you can think about your Mount Rushmore. And uh, so that kind of stuff. We're going to, yeah, see CIA agents. Top top four, your Mount Rushmore of leakers. <laughs> um, oh, who was that dude for the firm? I almost said uh, Mark King, but that's pro, uh, level 41. Um, I, I can't think of that guy's name, damn it. Anyway, 
Um, so we're going to have like different things like that. We're going to have seven days a week. Right now I'll have to plan uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday around my, my uh, pub schedule. Um, but if I do get to the point where I'm not doing the pub anymore, then we just have, you know, uh, extra time to do it. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, the great thing about this is, guys, I can actually set it up. I can actually set it up where if people just want to see the Mount Rushmore show, that's all they got to pay for. You know, if they just want the Delphi stuff, I'm going to keep the YouTube channel going. I was going to shut it down, but actually a couple of people, uh, one of the big things was uh, Pisces um, and Guitarista kind of combine, com, uh, combined to um, convince me that uh, a Patreon was a great idea. And um, Pisces told me that it would be um, beneficial if I did at least for the for uh, the, uh, temporarily at the beginning, if I ran them concurrently and still kept the Delphi after dark going. So I'm going to do that. Um, but we're going to be able to have a lot of fun, guys. We're going to be able to do more call ins because we can weed out the, the loonies. And uh, so we'll be able to do more call ins. We'll be able to have. Uh, more participation from the audience and stuff like that. We're going to have a blast. <laughs> um, now, I want to say, because I've been seeing the comments, and I get people saying a lot, okay, here are the top comments, and I want to respond to them here. It's not about you, Snay. Oh, oh, it's not, it's not about me. See, I didn't know that. I thought it was all about me. You know, I mean, when I turn on the TV at night and I hear them saying things like, you know, Rick Snay runs Delphi after dark. He does not wear a toupee. He's just Mr. Perfect hair. I hear him saying things like that. And I think. Well, it's about me then, right? Duh. It's not about me. Guess what else it's not about? It's not about a single actor, actor, crazy sex crime where he didn't get any sex. Okay. That's also what it's not about. Now, Yesterday, Amber Holder testified that Brad Holder told her the purpose or the instigation of the fight, <clears throat> the reason he and uh, Westfall had their falling out is that Westfall wanted to move beyond animal sacrifice. It's not the defense making it up, people. These are people testifying to. Got it? People testifying to. Now, you, you, you understand that. You, you, you get what I'm saying. Okay. So... <clears throat> Heather quit. You know what? <laughs> the funny thing is, I asked Laura when I got it cut because it's pretty short right now. When I got it cut, I said, the people that say I wear a toupee, do they think I get the toupees cut? Or do they think that um, I go out and I buy a short toupee to put on my head? And then when my sides grow out a little bit, I get a longer toupee, you know? I saw so many people, this dude wears a rug and won't admit it. I will bet you $150,000 that you can't take this rug off of my head. <laughs> but anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about Wiener. Oh, you bet I'm going to talk about Wiener, Smiley Kylie. I know how much guys like it when I talk about Wiener. <laughs> Oh, my God, guys. Yesterday, um, uh, 
I was, I wanted to get a hold of Tony Klein because I'm going up that way next week and um, he's got a shirt for me and stuff. And he sent me a text and told me he ate four gummies. I'm like, you fucking idiot. So I told him I was going to call him later and I go, Oh man, I'm thinking it was about like eight o'clock and it was a couple hours after he took those gummies. And I was like, Oh shit, I'll bet he's asleep. So I sent him a text. I said, you up? And then I thought how, you know, kind of <laughs> gay that sounded. And I said, no homo. And then I said, I just realized how gay that sounded. And then a little bit later, I thought, you know, it was real late. And I was thinking, oh, you know, I need to ask somebody something. You know, I have all these questions. I need to get check with people. And then I looked at the clock and I was like, oh, it's three hours earlier where Anthony is. So I texted Greeno and I said again, you up? Oh. <laughs> so then real quickly, I typed no homo after that. And I put, damn it, that's twice. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. Um, so, uh, I, what was I talking about? <laughs> Jason Baker, Rick, Rick has a, oh yeah. Yeah. Panty. Remember, uh, uh, Kramer on Seinfeld when, uh, Newman was behind the books at the library, like quoting poetry to him so he could like, you know, he was being his Cyrano. And then Kramer's like talking to that woman and he goes, do I smell Pantene? Do I smell Pantene? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, yesterday you heard uh, Amber Holder testified to that. The Elvis Fields connection was established. Johnny Messer's uncle or cousin or something used to live with Elvis Fields. Okay. Um, I believe it was Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend had a phone that had a video that Johnny Messer made of them kidnapping a girl and a man named Wiener. Now, I don't know if it was the same kidnapping or if they took the girl, then they took the Wiener or if the Wiener came before the girl. I don't know which came first, the wiener or the girl. Um, wiener, 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 one wiener. Come on, Jason. One wiener sitting next to another wiener. <laughs> um, <clears throat> guys, if, if you troll or if you uh, oppose certain people, you, they're going to say you're me. If you defend me to certain people, they're going to say you're me. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, Jeremiah, I would say that that's going to be, yeah, that Amber is going to be testifying. Yeah. Okay, oh, guys. Hey, Sam, welcome. Um, and guys, think about this. The Patreon thing also, also, I think I'm going to be able to set up a podcast, like a weekly podcast. And, um, you know, that would be neat, right? Anyway, um, all these things, like, what are you thinking about that, guys? You know, Amber Holder talking about the moving beyond animal sacrifice. Um, Johnny Messer with a history of kidnapping girls at gunpoint, violence, all this stuff. Did you hear about it? How many, let's take a quick poll in, in the chat right now. How many people heard about the Johnny Messer, Amber Holder, Elvis Field stuff yesterday in the news? How many people, you know, just put a Y or an N or a yes sir or a no. How many people heard about it on the news last night? This is perfectly legal Delta eight. When a woman kidnaps a wiener. Oh, 
up. <laughs> I don't want to look at it anymore. <clears throat> See, most people are saying no. Most people are saying no. Only from Bob Mata. Most people are saying no. Now, how many of you heard about that crazy YouTuber that got thrown out? I bet you heard about that, didn't you? So see, guys, there was no way I was going to be testifying. There was no way I was getting back into that courthouse at lunch. This was the diversion. That's why they came up to me when I was doing nothing. Okay? Gambies was right there with me. And she told me I made it a point to stay with you. Because I knew something was coming. Talk to her, guys. Gambies. She's not going to lie for me. You know, what happened? Oh, yeah, I knew it was a setup, Dave. Guys, yesterday morning, my wife was kind of confused. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. My wife loves Shakespeare. She does. But she doesn't quite understand it. So until she got with me, she didn't really like to go see it and everything because she couldn't really grasp what they were saying and stuff. Um, but she loves theater, you know, and a good story. So when she got with me, one of the first things I told her was anytime I can see Shakespeare, Shakespeare in the park, a high school play, I don't care. I want to see Shakespeare. I love it. So I take her to see Shakespeare. If she has anything like, you know, if she says, what, what was that? What did they mean? Why did he, what, what, you know, I can explain it to her. Um, so, um, when I got up yesterday morning, I was laying in bed, staring at the ceiling and, uh, she was laying there next to me. And when it was time to get up, I just said, well, cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. Now she was confused. She probably thought it was from Star Trek six, but <laughs> you can't appreciate Shakespeare until you read him in the original Klingon. Um, J S E D high fourth grader. Oh no, I'm an A grader. I am grade A. I am grade A. You know I am. Now, let me ask you something, J S E D J E N. What would you do? If someone were threatening your spouse, are you a man? Are you a woman? Are you married? You see, guys, if you're a man and you would let someone talk about your wife the way they talked about my wife and do nothing about it, I don't have any fucking respect for you at all. None. Not a shred. Um, right now I don't, I, I, I've got my, um, a Patreon set up and everything. I've, I've got it reserved and stuff, but I haven't fleshed it out yet. As soon as I do, everybody will know. I promise. Um, and oh, guys, we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun because it's going to be, it's going to be everything. We're not going to be concentrating on just one area. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It really is. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, it, bottom line, guys, um, you, you guys don't understand. All right. I, let me make you understand one thing um, about me. <clears throat> uh, Angela Lester, there was no danger of me going to jail. I know the law. I know exactly how much I can do. I continued walking when the cops were following me, because the minute I stopped, that's, that's aggressive. So I continued walking. I turned around and walked backwards and taunted them. And if they had bothered me again, I would have taunted them a second time. But no, I taunted them. I teased them. Because that's what I do. I've told you so many times, I'm a clown. <laughs> And people go, he's a clown. You think? 
<laughs> Somebody even said, why do you laugh after everything you say? I don't laugh after everything I say. <laughs> That's just who I am, dude. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch. Look how easy that is. You know? See, okay. I come up to you. I say, hey, man, what's your favorite baseball team? You say St. Louis Cardinals. Now, right away, I think you're a psycho. All right? But I don't say that. I go, oh, cool. Okay. And we go our separate ways. I mean, when somebody comes up to me and they say, hey, man, you know, I'm a Yankees fan. I don't say, oh, I'm sorry. Have, is, is there therapy available? Is it covered by Obamacare or whatever? You know, I say, oh, you shut your mouth, Jennifer. <laughs> I love it when people come into the pub and they're wearing their Cardinals. I always go. Hey, all right, Louisville. <laughs> they get all pissed. I told this one guy he'd come in in a Yankees hat, and I go, Ooh, sir, um, if your hat got all that stuff all over it when you were here, we'll pay to clean it. You know, he was like, What? <laughs> oh, I'm surrounded by damn cards fans. Oh, you guys go to hell. I am going to be in uh, Cincinnati, by the way. Um, on the 30th, I am going to see a band called Cowboy Mouth with my noto, my friend boy, my Filipino friend, Jose, Jose Hoven. Remember I told you about Pop, um, who we lost recently. Um, good friend. Um, it's his son. I've been friends with him for years. Um, yeah, go Cubs. Go Cubs, baby. I got your Cardinals. I got your Cardinals right here. <laughs> anyway. Um, so. Let me, let me say. First. Well, you, Jennifer. You behave. <laughs> oh, my God, guys. I like to go to. Uh, oh, oh, Ashley Schaefer. Oh, oh, no, th no, you did not. You did not. F the Cubs. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to have to shoot you. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. No politics, no religion, and no Cubs. Okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I like to go over to Great American Ballpark um, to watch the Cubs play. It's easier to get tickets. It's less to travel. Uh, parking is about a quarter of the price. And they have these seats that you can pay, like, $35 to sit in. And they're, like, in the corner of left field along the baseline, sort of. And um, they're all-you-can-eat seats. I ate nine hot dogs once. It was so cool. So anyway. Um, oh, I like that, Michelle. That's or Jennifer Rochelle. Jennifer Rochelle. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, stick around. Uh, we are going to be needing guys when we move over to the Patreon, especially we're going to be needing more mods. We're going to be needing help. Um, we, uh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll have some work for people over there. Um, but to get back to what I was saying about the uh, Great American Ballpark, and it's a beautiful ballpark. It's a great place to watch uh, a ball game. I took Laura over there last year to see the Rays, and, uh, oh, it was just a beautiful night. And, oh, my God, man, we had a home run land right in front of us. <laughs> uh, it was a, a, a Rizzioni. It, I mean, it was right in front of us. So, oh, yeah, it is a great park. It's gorgeous. I love it. Um, it's a pleasure to watch a ball game there. I mean, I'll go watch a ball game there. I don't care who's playing. <laughs> but anyway, um, I go to uh, over there to Cincinnati, and the fans sometimes, you know, will be in there. And now before the Cubs won the World Series, um, I was out in the outfield, and I was going, let's go Cubbies. And the uh, – uh, Reds fans were going, 1908. I was like, oh, 
Oh, that's cold. <laughs> so, but yeah, we had a great time. Um, anytime we go over there, actually, uh, me and Tony Klein and uh, Jeep are going to be heading over that way here pretty soon. Somebody else too, I think, uh, Mark, um, Mark from Kokomo. I think he's going to go with us. So, you know, if, if any of you guys want to go, man, it, it should be fun. Um, ape, we have an ape in here. Has anybody seen uh, Dune 2? I, I, oh my God, I, I was so blown away by the first one. I can't wait to see the second one. Um, I just wondered if anybody's seen it yet. Uh, that new Planet of the Apes movie is coming out. Kingdom on the Planet of the Apes. I'm an ape head, guys. I love apes. Yeah. Gray, actually, um, I told him, I said, hey, why don't we make a joint announcement, see how many creators we can get to condemn the people that are putting out the trash um, people that are attacking my wife and things like that. Um, and he attacked me again instead. Um, but Gray, you have to understand something. Gray is not a threat to me intellectually. And I think that really bothers him. When I called his program that night, um, I flat up owned him. And he just kept getting angrier and angrier and acting like acting, acting the fool. And uh, then he hung up on me. And see, that's the reason he will not debate me face to face because he can't hang up on me then. So, you know. Dean Johnson, I didn't think Gray could look dumber, but then I seen the CW show. You know, the funny thing is. Oh, no, there are more, Catalina. Um, the main person that's been attacking my wife is wife Lilith, Holly. Um, she seems to think she's under the impression that I was blackmailing her to try and get her daughter's information. Why? I don't know. Um, she says I called her daughter a liar about being catfished. No, I never did. I called Holly a liar. I believe her daughter was catfished. I honestly do. I, I believe that her daughter had some freaky, some dude tried to pull on her, some shit some dude tried to pull on her. Um, but it was not Kagan Klein. It was not Rick, Rick Allen. And it had nothing to do with Delphi. But the only way that she could connect this all together was to say that Richard Allen, that she turned him in because she tracked him down because his pedo ring was part of the people that were catfishing her daughter. See, she took this event in her daughter's life. She put her daughter out there herself to use um, her daughter to get attention for something that never happened to make it look like she's connected to the Delphi case. And then she blames everybody else for trying to bring her daughter into it. So then she told me, she'll, she'll, if you watch the video, guys, I just put up a video not too long ago called uh, How Far is Too Far. Go through, pause it, read some of those things that, that um, oh, you leaving, Alice? Get some rest, hon. Love you. It's good to see you. Um, read some of that stuff that she was saying, you know, things about my daughter or my wife eating Tony Klein's dick three times a day or whatever, these kind of things, these are not things a rational adult says about a woman that she's never met. And like I said, you have to understand my wife. She does not have an enemy in the world. I said yesterday, even her ex-husband loves her. She's a wonderful person. She is. She sings in her church choir. She has been to a mission in Honduras. She couldn't think of a worse or she couldn't think of a bad thing to say about the worst person on the planet, honestly. And she works in 
a um, Tina Stare, you have a big mouth. Well, you have a big mouth. Anyway, <laughs> um, she <clears throat> uh, works in the child support division of the Marion County Courthouse. For some reason, I said my wife can tell me about court procedures that I don't know about. These were in reference to things like trying to get restraining orders and stuff. Nothing to do with Delphi. Nothing to do with Delphi. But Holly's hatred and obsession with me is so much. And when I started ignoring them and not never saying her name, not even going and looking what she was posting, she started going after my wife because they know, they know that's the way you get me by going after my wife. And you'll get me every time. But sooner or later, you're going to get more than you bargained for. That's what almost happened to Noe. Noe fucked around and found out. You look at those, those videos. They say, oh, he was clearly, clearly the aggressor. At that point, yeah, I was. And you see Noe backing up? He couldn't get backed up quick enough because he's a coward. Because he realized I was not going to go along with it. I was not going to be intimidated. Yes, Noe and Holly are affiliated. They are the best buddies. Prof um, gets Noe and Holly all riled up. Holly gets Noe ginned up and pumped up to be a, to be a dick. And then Holly goes and hides and doesn't even show up at the hearing and lets Noe do her dirty work for her. Okay. No, Lori didn't. Uh, Laura, Lori, Laura didn't write Ghosts of Avalon. It was actually written by Steve Smith, who was the... Uh, guitar player and basic writer for uh, uh, Soundsmith. She just sang it. And the funny thing is she's every voice in the song. It's like tracked like four times. It's like she's doing harmony with herself. You can find the whole song. It's uh, pretty cool. Um, it's on, I believe, their second album. And she was on that one. She was on their second album and their third album. She does the lead on a song called... Uh, uh, Eastern Star. Oh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. If you look up Soundsmith, and that's like, it's spelled like myth, M-Y. Um, I could, you know, if anybody would like it, I think I have the, uh, the greatest hits, and it has Ghosts of Avalon. It also has, it has Step to the Mark, which is the song I use for Real Talk. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, it has a bunch of different um, songs on it with her. And I think there's like three or four that she, uh, that Laura actually sings lead on. So, no, I can see you, D. I can see you. You know what happens sometimes, D, in criminality? That's a pretty popular channel. So I think a lot of times the chat gets going too fast. And I think they start putting on slow mode. So I don't think it's you. I, I think it's just, you know. So anyway, um, yeah, like I said, guys, I, I mean it. I'm done with them, okay? The only reason I'm talking about them tonight is because people want to know. And I'm going to tell you what happened. I, I desperately want people to see what Holly and Noe and Prof are all about. I do. Um, because you're going to hear all, the, all over the place. You're going to hear about how I was the aggressor and how I was the idiot. I was the child and I'm making it about me. Noe made his intentions very clear. He told me, he told uh, Thomas Frost, Frosty, he told Jinx, he told Indy Archives, he told all of us, he said, I am going to put my phone in your face and you're going to answer the people's questions because he and Holly are Team Abby and Libby, but they have put out no Delphi content for months. It's all snay, 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 snay. Then you got the prof. I have, I didn't even include prof in the chat, in the uh, video because it's just too much. Prof runs the biggest troll farm on YouTube. 
but yet he's always saying the troll farm is attacking him. I have Noe blocked under seven profiles, seven alts I have Noe blocked under. That's trolling. That's a troll farm. Prof is two out of every three nasty, negative, slanderous comments about my wife on Holly's channel. Um, and like I said, guys, watch the video. Read the things that they say about my wife. You're going to realize why I did what I did yesterday. Because this bullshit they're doing, if they, so I've had people say, yeah, I reported your wife, Snay, for doing her job. If people keep doing that and she gets fired from her job, guess what? I'm going to find you. Okay. Period. I, I said, guys, how many times did I sit and look right in that camera and say, leave my wife alone or I promise you, I promise you when I see you, I will get in your face. Now, uh, I have not watched it. I don't care. I won't watch it. I couldn't give less of a rat's ass for what Oily Melvin has to say. Okay. Oily is a liar, a backstabber. What do you apologize for, D? Because you thought you were blocked? We don't have to apologize for that. Um, but anyway. <laughs> uh, Oily is a liar. She always has been. Um, uh, she I apparently is telling people I, I threatened her yesterday and I said, watch your back, people. <laughs> One thing you are never going to hear me say. <clears throat> all right. You will never hear me tell someone to watch their back if I'm trying to intimidate them. I don't want you to watch your back if I'm trying to intimidate you because when I come, you're going to see me coming. See, I'm not a coward. I feel like if you are going to be man enough or, you know, woman enough or whatever <laughs> to run your mouth on the other side of this screen, when I'm face to face with you, you damn sure better have the same balls. And when Somebody like Oily or the Hobbit Skip lies about me, tries to destroy my life, destroys a friend of mine's life, um, continues to lie about me and my friends. Okay. When somebody like that, um, Skip, wants to threaten me and tell me, oh, you've never seen me in person, buddy, and all this, and talk about what a badass he is. Oh, yeah, he's bad. And then when he's face to face with me, all he can do is go, hi, Rick. <laughs> I'm going to shake your hand, Skip. No. no. See, what I say when I'm sitting here is the same thing I'm going to say when I'm standing in front of you. Bottom line, every time. Kills you, doesn't it? You guys hate that. You guys hate that because you talk tough. You run your mouth. I back it up. It's that simple. What is the name of the group that you and your brother say? Um, that is uh they are called here. I'm gonna put it in the chat here. <clears throat> They're not together anymore. They they split up a couple years ago, but this is the name of the band. And um, there you go. Oh, leads with love. That was supposed to be a private video. <laughs> I, I didn't realize people could watch it. Uh, Kira said, "Oh, I like that video you made for that Henry kid," and I was like, "Oh shit, that's supposed to be private." <laughs> That is uh, the son of a friend of mine that I, I, I've talked about her in the channel before. She lives in Canada. 
used to live in uh, Detroit. I met her years ago when uh, we were some of the very first people on the internet. My brother-in-law being the, you know, um, being the uh, techie guy that he is, we had computers before a lot of people and we were hooked up to the internet. Most people, if you had internet in Mogensport, you were dialing, paying long distance to dial into AOL and Kokomo. We had a close friend who had a server and we were like, there were like six of us hooked up on it at first. And then it, he went, you know, public and, you know, uh, saved the money or, you know, started rent or started selling internet to people and everything. But we got, you know, back in 1996, we were online um, and we were, you know, pretty new. It was pretty new. It was a great experience. And I went to this chat line and I met a bunch of great people there. And she was one of them that I met. And we remained friends all this time. So so she has um, uh, oh, clicks testimony. Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I got, yeah. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. See, that's why I need people to uh, to give me a uh, little boost every now and then. Oh, you you use flat wounds? I love them. They, I don't know. I I don't. I get some great tone out of them, and that's the complaint I've heard from some people. It's ridiculous. Um. So yeah, let's get back to the uh, the testimony, okay? Because, like I said. You didn't hear this crap on TV. Now, you want to blame me? I get it, okay? Because I I don't know. I, did anybody get to see all of HCC's live today? I caught some of it. I couldn't watch it all. But the one thing I was so impressed with is that I caught like at least the first hour of it, and I never heard him say Snay once. I never heard him talk about me one time. That's what you should have been doing yesterday, guys. You want to say, it's not about you, Snay. Then don't talk about me. Talk about what was presented. Talk about the evidence. Okay? Don't talk about me. Because it's not about me. It's about that evidence. But they wanted to make it about me. Don't you see that, guys? Don't you see that? They wanted to make it about me. And I knew that no matter what I did, I was out of there. They sent Noe after me. And people said, oh, he was stalking Noe. Uh-uh. I left the court. Oh, I left the courtroom because I needed to get uh, to go to the bathroom, right? Now, guys, I have been on, med you know, different medicines um, for one thing, I take a medicine for my blood pressure that makes me pee a lot. <laughs> um, for another thing, um, that that one kind of dries me out, makes me thirsty. Okay. But I have recently been on a medication to help with my throat. You know, so it's also drying me out a little bit. I happen to see a message from somebody who was like, oh, what's this? What kind of man has to get a drink and go to the bathroom during court like a little kid? <laughs> you guys are desperate, man. First of all, I'm 58 years old. I got to pee at least three times an hour. You know what I mean? Come on. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we learn that Brad Holder. Now, and, and you know what? The early part of the day, early part of the day was when the defense got to put there on there. I guess the, the prosecution was all, you know, blah, 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 you know, and all that kind of stuff. And um, the afternoon session, the one I was kicked out of, that's when the interesting stuff came out. Okay. So blame me if you want, guys. Say that it's not about me. Say that I was trying to make it about me. 
stuff like that. Well, thank you, Amy. A lot of people say I don't look as my age. I don't feel my age. I damn don't feel my age. <laughs> um, but, you know, you want to say it wasn't about me? I agree. It's not about me. So don't talk about me. Okay? Don't talk about me. Talk about what came out yesterday. Talk about Amber Holder saying that the fight between Westfall and, and Brad Holder was about him wanting to move on from animal sacrifice. Okay. Talk about the fact that we established that Johnny Messer had a video of kidnapping at gunpoint on his phone. Okay. Yeah. And Barbara knows who I am, guys. Let me put that up there real quick. Barbara knows who I am and she didn't say my name. Thank you, Barbara. It was cool. I, I, I you know, Barbara and I have our differences. Um, but she knows damn well who I was. She knows she knows who, who it was. She could have said my name. She didn't. And that's cool. I appreciate it. I really do. Um, but guys, click. That is where this all comes from. Because he sent a letter to Nick the Mick. I can say it. I'm Irish. And he said, Nick, why are you using this stuff here in this Richard Allen PCA when the stuff I gave you is much more compelling? You have a better case against these guys. Okay. The defense didn't get that letter for a while. But now they have been talking to Click. And people say, oh, Click says the cops don't believe in the Odin theory. That's not what he said. What did he say? He said, no one in law enforcement believes it was a ritual sacrifice. Neither do I. It was a plain and simple hit. The ritual stuff was just to get the morons like Fielder, or, or I mean, I mean, Fielder, Fields, Elvis Field, yeah, Fields, and Johnny Messer and Rod Abrams to do the dirty work. Okay, guys, they had Elvis set up to be the patsy. He should have been arrested the first week, but. Dumbass freaking Carroll County lost the spit. Yes, Click did testify. You found out that when you were going back and forth with Murder Sheet, you know, and they were talking all of this stuff, um, you found out that they split things up that Click was saying to take away from the significance of what he was saying. Okay. Now, I haven't watched Bob today. I haven't heard from Bob. I met, I contacted Bob yesterday and I told him, I said, because guys, honestly, I watched. To me, it looked like he was mocking me. I, I don't know what you thought. You know, some of you, you don't have to agree with me. I, I honestly want opinions. If you watched what he said about me yesterday, it looked to me like he was mocking me because he was like, and Rick Snay, you know, he's out there and this guy, and he's like, you know, oh, you, you heard me said something about my wife, you know. Um, that to me looked like he was mocking me. And he apologized for it, said, oh, no, that's not he was not what he was trying to do. And he, you know, now we'll see. We'll see if he sets the record straight and says, you know, guys, I want to say here, whatever Rick Snay did, Oh, thank you there, Dean. I, I don't know if you get, did, didn't get timed out, guys. I don't know. Dean's a good guy. He don't need to get timed out. But uh, um, but but we'll see. I want to know um, if he is willing to tell people, okay, at first I thought this guy was just a lunatic or something, but now that I see what happened, I understand everything he did. All right? Because I tried to tell him when I was chatting him up. You know what it reminded me of, guys? <clears throat> you remember Seinfeld when Jerry was on The Tonight Show and George went from Cheers and what was the dude's name from uh, L.A. Law? Somebody help me. He was on there and George was like, chatting them up in the hallway and was telling them, you know what, you know, you know what you ought to do in Cheers? 
you know, maybe just, you know, enough with the bar. Maybe, you know, let's go outside the bar. Let's do something else. Okay. Um, it reminded me of how, you know, he was so friendly with me and everything outside in the, in the lobby. And um, then um, it just seemed like he was like saying that I was like bothering him. Like I was, you know, pestering him. I'm a fanboy and everything. And, um, you know, he was like, yeah, Rick Snell, you know, he was chatting me up in the hallway. And then, you know, it just seemed to me like he was mocking me, belittling me, um, blowing me off. I mean, if he wasn't, that's fine. We will see if he, you know, says anything about it. But it, that's what it felt like to me. You know, it did. Um, and, you know, the thing is, like I say, guys. I am always going to be, hey, D. Spalding, what's up, bud? I am always going to be accused of so many things. I inspire a visceral hatred in certain people that can't even be described. If I remember when I went into Reddit one time and some woman just, oh, my God, just, you know, I hate you with a passion. You are vile. Your stench needs to be washed from the face of this earth and blah, 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 blah. And somebody who was kind of new to Reddit um, put like a laugh and said, my God, this woman hates you. And I was like, I know. And I don't even know who she is. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, I, you know what, Catalina, I hope he does. I hope Bob likes me because the thing is, um, we're on the same freaking team and I wasn't trying to, you know, guys, here's the thing about this. I am a peer now with Bob. Okay. I'm a YouTuber. Whether people want to admit it or not, this channel isn't popular. This channel is a success. Okay. Is it because of me? I don't know. Maybe a little bit, but a lot of it's because of you guys. You know, um, I got people that I think that come in because they enjoy the chat. Couldn't give a rat's what I say. And that's cool. I don't mind that. So that's right. Love me or hate me. You always going to say my name. <laughs> um what was, I mean, Hiawatha, man. Hiawatha just lost it. What the fuck was that all about? I don't know, man. It, you know, that's... I, oh, Deb, now you're going to get yourself in trouble. Don't let, don't let him see that. <laughs> um, yeah, I know what you're trying to say, Sam. <laughs> So, uh, you know, what were we saying? Well, you know, like I was saying before, guys, you didn't hear anything about the good stuff that happened yesterday because they were all talking about the crazy YouTuber that got kicked out. And what gets me is if you were a responsible journalist, and you're covering this thing, and you heard that a YouTuber got kicked out of the courthouse. This has been going on for how long? And has there ever been something like this before? Has there ever been a time when a YouTuber was kicked out of the courthouse? We haven't been causing trouble except for Noe, Holly. But <clears throat> um, why? Would you not say a YouTuber got kicked out of the courthouse today? See if you can find out who that is. Let's talk to him and see what's up. Just like with the pictures, guys. Everybody wanted to talk about who got the pictures and everything. Nobody wanted to talk to the guy who got the pictures and said, I got pictures. <laughs> and no, I'm not saying, oh, you need to talk to me, 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 me. No, I'm saying, why aren't you curious? Why aren't you curious? 
Guys, yesterday, this dude that was up on the stand that was uh, talking about the uh, – I got lost here, but <laughs> the, the, the dude that was talking about the investigation that he did into the leaks, he is responsible for investigating the leaks, how far they went, where they came from. Hennessy says, now you talk to uh, Tahara Island felt. Yes. And Miss Island felt said she got the pictures from a Tyler Carpenter. Yes. Did you interview Tyler Carpenter? No. Do you know who Tyler Carpenter got the pictures from? No. Why didn't you? I thought you were supposed to be finding the source or the finding out about the leak. Well, yeah, but by then we already knew where it came from. So. So you found out where it came from and you just stopped. You didn't talk to someone who got them from somewhere. What? I, what? <laughs> you, you can't make it up. And, and guys, the funny thing is, the Richard Allen did it crowd. They don't have how I just cannot imagine anybody that doesn't have the intellectual curiosity to look beyond this. <laughs> it ain't about Rick Snake. You know, it ain't about you, Snay. I know. <laughs> I don't want it to be about me. But if they ever ask me, what happened in the courtroom yesterday? Well, I got thrown out because they said I caused a disturbance. But I really think what they were trying to do is take away from the fact that uh, Detective Click testified, and so did Amber, and so did, uh, you know. You see? Yeah, the defense haven't been paid yet. Guys, what did I tell you a year ago? Remember when I did the the uh, the um, live stream with Baldwin and Rosie and I had a picture of Nick the Mick? I can say it. I'm Irish. And I said, what did I say? I said, is this man in over his head? Yeah, he is. I knew then, guys. I knew who Andrew Baldwin was. I'm kind of a court junkie. I, I I had heard of Brad Rosie before, but I wasn't really. I mean, he's from my hometown, guys. I probably went to school with his dad because I went to school with a Brad Rosie, but it's not the same one. Um, but, you know, I, I knew. I knew. You are going to have a hard time, Nick, because you ain't got it. Now, here's something else I wanted to bring up. At the beginning, or not at the beginning, in the middle, right before, Randy brought up that Kathy Clinding and Clindening and I got into a discussion and that it was loud enough to where they could hear us inside the courtroom. And like I said, while I'm not sorry that people overheard, I'm sorry that the conversation spilled. I, I That was not my intention. If that was one of the reasons they threw me out, okay, I get that. It wasn't my fault. When she come up, she come up and started talking to me. And I had already gotten a vibe from her. You know, one night on here, she was saying, well, I don't think Flora and Delphi are related. And I was like, wait, what? Because you're the one that convinced me they were related. 
but now she doesn't think they were related. And she also doesn't think there's any corruption at all involved in Flora. Kathy Clendenning, who agreed with me that Dan Dublin or Doolin was the Forrest Gump of fuckery in Carroll County. She said to me, Rick, I know Jesse Snyder, but that was 21 years ago. So what? He still is just as dead. His friends still miss him. His family still lives without him. But the main thing is, Kathy approached me, tried to convince me that Richard Allen is guilty, that there is no corruption going on in Delphi, and that there is no corruption involved in Florida, and that the two are not related. Now, why? It, you know, they say, oh, well, you know, somebody got to her. That's very possible. But I don't think they threatened her. I don't think that's what this is about. You know what I think it's about? When they somehow got Galen Rose in a room by herself, and she settled for a, an extremely low ball settlement. And Kathy probably should have found a way to be in there with her so she didn't get taken advantage of. So I'm pretty sure she probably feels bad about that. But I think now they had Galen sign a non-disclosure agreement and there's some deal where they can come and take back all of the money that they gave her in the settlement if she breathes a word about arson or corruption or anything like that. And the same thing with Kathy. They probably told her, you say anything, we'll take the money away from Galen and say it was your fault. Now, that's my theory. Speculation. But you know what's not speculation? The dozens of times that Kathy sat on this live stream and told you about how corrupt things were surrounding the Flora fire, how corrupt things were surrounding Delphi. And now she says, there's nothing. And she was trying to get me. I'm sitting there, guys. Imagine, you know, the bench was right outside the doors of the courtroom. She came up and started talking to me. I said, Kathy, hold up. You're talking to the wrong person. Okay. And she said, but you don't understand. You're giving me I said, Kathy, you're talking to the wrong person. And I got up and tried to walk away from her. She got up and followed me and continued and continued after I had asked her to stop. Facts. There was a guard from I, from the Indiana Department of Corrections out there, witnessed the whole thing, put him under oath. There were cameras everywhere. Would not leave me alone. The doors open. I tried to go into the courtroom. She followed me, still trying to convince me that Richard Allen is a murderer. That there's no corruption going on here. So I walked up to the first deputy I saw and I said, could you have this woman leave me alone? She's harassing me and I don't want to talk to her. And she walked back to her seat. And then today, in my very own discord, Jinx tried to tell me, no, wait now, you know, Kathy just, and I said, Jinx, I'm not talking about this. I'm just not. Guys, 
if you want to stop watching me because of this, I get it. I'm cool. I understand. But I am 100% convinced that Richard Allen did not kill those girls. Had nothing to do with any of this. That's it. And you're not going to convince me otherwise. Just not. Okay. Now, like I said, with Julie, if if Julie is saying that I threatened her, oh, well, I don't care. Because I didn't. And like I said, you, can, you know it wasn't me because I don't tell people, watch your back. That's got to be the lowest sleazeball bullshit threat you can make to somebody. Hey, you better watch your back. Why? Because you're going to sneak up and attack me from behind? See, I've always told people, if you sneak up and you attack me from behind, you better make sure you get me. <laughs> Better make sure you get me, because if you sneak up from behind and you don't get me, now I'm behind you. They call this the vice. Sometimes they call it the triangle <laughs> at the pub. I put him out with it. <laughs> they all like... Somebody asked me once, have you ever, have you ever been afraid that you killed somebody? Yeah. I, yeah. Um, this one kid, I was so, I just saw red because he went after my favorite bartender and I grabbed, I just went up, I grabbed him like this and I was dragging him out like this. And he was here and he was like, and one of the other bartenders goes, you gotta let him go, dude. You gotta let him go. He's out. And it was like that, like that quick seconds. He was out. So I, grabbed him by the arms or I, I let him go and his head bounced really hard off the floor in the foyer area between the doors. I didn't mean for that to happen, but I mean, it was like, you know, hard. <laughs> and I was like, Ooh, shit. you know, so I drug him out there and laid him on the sidewalk and his eyes were open and he was just laying there just staring up and not moving. And I thought, Oh shit, did I kill him? And then he kind of went, Oh, and he tried to get up and he was staggering all over the place. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> anyway. Um, Gull, I, she's elected, isn't she? Isn't Gull elected? I think she's elected. I think she's elected. But anyway, look, another thing, guys. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> Pepsi Zero. Um, find, okay, watch HCC's live stream. Like I said, did anybody see the whole thing? Because I was going to give him props because I didn't hear my name mentioned once, and I hope he didn't mention my name through the whole thing. Um, what happened yesterday? Hey, bossy. What happened yesterday where I got thrown out was going to happen no matter what I did. Okay. Um, I am firmly on the radar of the patties. I am firmly. HCC, it was from earlier today. Um, but he goes through. Thank you, Lise, with love. That's sweet. Oh, shit. Okay, let me write that down on my. Is this the one? No. Ah, here we go. Okay. Gucci. Thank you so much. Um, 
was I saying? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, it, what happened yesterday was going to happen, no matter what. It was going to happen. Um, I am firmly on the radar of the patties. I am firmly on the radar of law enforcement now. The uh, it, oh, is is rescue all the dogs here? Is she here? She was such a blessing to me yesterday, guys. You wouldn't believe it. She she was. I, I'm so I'm so happy she was there. Like just like Gambies. If it hadn't been for those two, I uh, man. Oh, and I called all dogs bossy at first. <laughs> I go, you're Miss Bossy? Oh, no, wait, you're all dogs. <laughs> um, so, uh, HCC will tell you everything that happened yesterday. He will read, you know, the, the stuff is there. He'll go through the, the proceedings and he'll let you know what happened. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly, Jeremiah. That's why I'm on the radar. That I mean, when I sat, when I was getting ready to leave and I stopped in front of Kathy and I, you know, squatted down and she took my hand and I held her hand and she just, she looked so good, guys. I felt so happy. Uh, she looked so good. Her color is back. She was smiling. Um the hope is in her eyes now. She's she's she looks so good. I mean, and so did uh, Rick. Rick looked. I mean, like I said, he was. You could tell he was following. He was there. Uh, I mean, he would be sitting there, and they would say something that was like, "Huh?" And he'd go, you know. So he was following, and he was understanding. And now he can help in his own defense. Um. But yeah, you know. And after the good cry she had in the hallway, mom looked better too. And I think she felt better. Um, so, yeah, it was, you know, all these people that talk about, you know, oh, Kathy Allen, she's a bitch. She knew she was in on it. She knew her husband, yeah, but, 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 but. just like you talked about Tony Klein. Oh, yes, Pauline, these Pauline. I tell her that all the time. I told her, I was like, now remember, you are going to be filthy rich when this is over. And she's like, oh, I don't care about that. And I said, I know you don't, but you're going to be filthy rich. And, you know, I could use season tickets to the Colts. Uh, <laughs> I'm just playing, you know. She All the time she'll tell me thank you, and I'll say, you don't have to thank me, you know. Um, but yeah, you're right, Jeremiah. You're right. I felt the eyes of the patties on me when I was talking to Kathy Allen. I felt them. I, and I know you're watching. All right. I, I know you're watching. I want to. <clears throat> Guys, I am never going to sit here and tell you that I think the Patties were involved in the murders. I don't. Um, they. Uh, well, well, they're victims, like like Griffith here says. They're victims. I get it. Um, I don't think that they're involved. But I don't get how you can look at this PCA, know the parts of it that are false, and actually have any faith whatsoever in a police department that lied to you for six years. Lied to you. 
for six years. And make no mistake, Becky, Mike, Anna, Carrie, they lied to you. And they're still doing it. But <laughs> you believe them. How can you do that? How could you not at least say, yeah, prove it? No, you're 100% in the corner. Guys, Richard Allen was arrested on the 26th of October, and I think it was announced on the 28th, right? On the 29th, when people were saying, are we sure this is the guy? What was Becky Patty saying? Four words. Four words, guys, that I want you to remember. Four words that were spoken days after the arrest before they knew anything because everything was sealed. They had no PCA. They had no, he said he was dressed like bridge guy. They had no, he saw three girls. They had no, he said he was there. Okay. They had none of that. And the Patties, Becky Patty spoke four words that I want you to remember. The families have spoken. The families have spoken. With all due respect, the families in six years didn't solve this crime. Why do we need to just take your word for it simply because you say you have spoken? I can't do that. I can't do it. That's what she, uh, Becky said that to all of the people that were questioning whether or not this was the guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real, it's a, it's a complicated story and I hope I can tell you about it someday. No, you don't. No, you don't, Doug. You don't want to tell us about it. You don't want to tell us about it. As I'll tell you what, you threw me out of the courthouse yesterday. I get it. Okay. Um, you weren't going to let me testify anyway. Because you knew what I was going to testify. See, that's the thing, guys. Nobody knows what I was going to testify to. And I hinted around. I dropped some hints and everything. But nobody knows what I was going to testify to. Right? I do. And Nick does. And I think the judge knew. But see, when Tobe and I locked eyes and I was staring him down from the back of the room, like, you know, um, now I guess. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> you know what I should do? This is funny. This is what Jennifer put. Here's what I should do. I should I should make a thing, a blurb for my thumbnails on my YouTube thing and say, the only YouTuber thrown out of the Allen County Courthouse. <laughs> That'd be funny. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, they. <laughs> hey, man, I'm Irish, okay? <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't get very far trying to, <laughs> trying to flex on that. Anyway, um, am I crazy, Jessica? Am I? That's pretty cool. What kind of crazy am I? Because um, you're apparently a psychiatrist. So what kind of crazy am I? Am I schizophrenic, which is a chemical reaction in the brain, which causes a, uh, an ability to have a reuptake of uh, serotonin and things like that? Um, am I antisocial? Did you know that most antisocial people are very sociable? 
antisocial and antisociable are not the same thing. Which one am I? Which one am I? Jennifer Schubach. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. Okay. So you say, let's do it this way. Okay. I'm the Heath Ledger Joker. Ready? And, and you're that dude, you know, you're crazy. Ready? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I know the squealers when I see them, men. <laughs> Guys, people say, what do you laugh after everything you say? It's because I'm making you look stupid, guys. Come on. I'm laughing at you. Okay. Um, for, for example, Jessica Schubach here. You're crazy. Jessica, why would I give a rat's ass that you think I'm crazy? Who are you? I don't know you who you are. And you don't know who I am. And like I said, I would be willing to bet that you're not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. So why the fuck should I give a damn that you think I'm crazy? Now, if it makes you feel better to say it, I'm okay with that. You know? <laughs> but I'm crazy, huh? I'm crazy. Don't you think I'm funny, too? Would you like funny? You like funny, Jessica? Yeah, me too. But I'm a clown. I'm supposed to. So what kind of crazy am I? Jessica, come on. Let's see. I bet you left already, didn't you? See? Come on, guys. It's easy. It is easy to come into a creator's chat and say, you're crazy. It's a lot harder to say why you think that person is crazy. Oh, is she taking screenshots for Gray? Is she? Hang on. Um, one of the great things about being a YouTube host is that I'm wearing my shirt here and I could be sitting here in my underwear, my boxer briefs, and you wouldn't know it. And it just so happens that right now I am sitting here in my boxer briefs. So it's going to be real easy for me to show my ass to Gray Hughes. Okay. So I'm going to do that right now. Gray, this is for you. No, I'm not. You think I'm going to show you my junk? Come on. <laughs> you know what, Amy? Very soon here. Very soon here, I'm going to have Tony Klein right here on Delphi After Dark. He told me he was going to do it. And I, damn it, when I go see him this week, I'm going to make him, I'm going to say, dude, you told me you would. <laughs> and we're going to have Tony Klein on here. You know, a lot of people don't get it. They don't get it, you know. They don't understand why I like Tony. But here's the thing. How many of you guys have gotten to know me and you like me and you realize that the links that people go to make me look bad and the lies, the flat out lies that are told about me and my wife. Now, just flip that around a little bit and you don't have a chance to get to know me and all you're hearing is all these negative things about me, then you think, you know, oh man, what? You like Rick Snay's channel? Ooh, how could you like that channel? How can you like him? You know, and it's the same way with Tony. I, I get it, guys. What you have to understand is very little, very little of what you heard is actually true. Some of it is. Um, yeah, I'm going to still get him on here for a live, Dean. Um, some of it is true. And he told me it was. And he told me why. And he didn't make excuses. He accepted responsibility. 
He said, yeah, that yeah, was me. I'm, I was a dick back then. And another thing you guys got to understand here is I have not always been a nice guy. <laughs> there are going to be times um, where, I mean, there could be times in my life when you go back and look at some of the things I've done in my life that I'm not proud of. And if you define me by those things, you know, I'm a piece of shit. But you have to um, here's what I do. I view life as a series of lifetimes. There was a time when I had a lifetime as a union representative in a factory for 15 years. When I moved on from that is when my political activism truly began. Um, and because the, oh God, it, Samantha, that's a great idea. Oh, wow. That's a great idea. Yeah, because guys, Cujo died. I never even got to meet him. And, and guys, oh my God. Tony called me in tears when that dog died. This big monster that everybody's like, you know, you know, he's evil and everything. He's a killer. He called me bawling his eyes out when Cujo died. Um, man. So yeah, man, that'd be awesome if we if we yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> That's a good idea, Sam. I like that. Um, so, like I said, we are going to be having some uh, rearrangement here pretty soon. Uh, re rearrangement of things going into the uh, the um, mm. Patreon thing. <laughs> hey, Pamela, how's it going? Going into the Patreon thing, we're going to be doing some rearranging of things. Um, and like I said, I, I hope you'll all welcome my new number one. Uh, Hybrid Pisces will be taking over uh, the spot that Honeybee is stepping down from. Um, now, if, if you guys didn't know it, um, Gail Marr and uh, Rose, they are what I call my street team. Um, they keep their ear to the road. They, keep, they, they watch the comments and other sections and everything. They um, they'll respond to some of the comments, but, you know, they don't get into the whole back and forth tit for tat thing. They usually try to give uh, little peppers here and there, you know, pop, 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 you know, just set people straight and stuff like that. That's what I call my street team. Any of you can can do that type of stuff along with them. Um, Guitarista has uh, recently demonstrated a, uh, a talent for uh, personal or for uh, public relations. Um, so. I want to keep him in that sort of a capacity too. Um, and of course, like I said, Samantha is, is a great mod, but she hasn't been with us for very long. And moving on to Patreon, uh, Pisces has a Patreon background that I think is going to really help us out. So um, so my new number one, Hybrid Pisces, um, we will be uh, getting her up to speed very quickly. And uh, I need to, guys, we have to get her into the mod chat. Uh, I think, I think B can still do that. I think, um, I don't, I don't know anything about the discord thing. <laughs> I don't, you know, Rose runs the Facebook group for me and, um, the discord, I, I I'm not sure. I think Honeybee and Jinx mostly took care of that. Um, so we'll see how things go from there. Uh, All right, so uh, bottom line, guys, um, no, it's not about me, and I don't want it to be about me. Uh, I would love it if you never heard the name Snay in reference to yesterday again, because first of all, the idea 
that I blew my stack and got thrown out and made a scene because I didn't want to testify because I was afraid I had to perjure myself or take the fifth or whatever. I was there to testify for the defense. I volunteered. Um, I wasn't subpoenaed. Um, I wasn't under any kind of suspicion. So I don't know why people were saying, oh, he'll probably be in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I I don't get it, you know. And then people say, yeah, so you didn't get to testify. I wasn't going to get to testify anyway, guys. Okay. The only reason... Gull didn't say no from the very start is because they wanted to get me in the building. And then Mr. Uh, was a Lieutenant Hogan, Hogan with his heroes. <laughs> um, Hogan's heroes. When he came to throw me out and he said, you've been a problem all morning. No, I haven't. I've been a problem all year. And guess what? I'm just getting started. I'm going to be a problem for the next couple months. I'm going to be a problem for anybody that doesn't have a case. Because I'm going to keep reminding you that you don't have it. You don't have it. You don't have it, Tobe. You don't have it, Tony Liggett. You don't have it, Jerry Holman. You're a likable guy. Jerry was, I got the feeling that Jerry is caught in a position he doesn't like being in. He says everybody hates him and all that. I said, I don't hate you, Jerry. I like you more than some of them. And I do. Jerry's a likable guy. It, you know, it's sad to be on different sides like this. Um, you know, Nick the Mick. I can say it. I'm Irish. He and I, under different circumstances in another lifetime, still would have hated each other, but we wouldn't have been like, you know, like this. So I think, yeah, I think I'm a thorn in their side. Anyway, folks, anybody got anything they want to talk about before I leave? I just begin. You know, it, it, this is this is almost like the nightcap chats where I used to just put up a, a live and sit here and we just you know talk about whatever happened. I did have, like I say, you know, miss me, miss me. Now you got to kiss me. I was trying to. I'm highlighting the fact that, you know, let's face it, guys. Your goal was to arrest me. That's what your goal was. You failed. You didn't pull the trigger. Why? What were you afraid of? Hogan, Lieutenant Hogan, you know what you're, you know why, you know. They told you, you'll throw him out, he'll get belligerent, and you'll arrest him. But you didn't arrest me. Why? Why? And why did you have 20 cops? Like I said, what do you do when you get a badass up there? What do you call it, the National Guard? 20 cops, dudes, for me? I mean, damn, I felt like Mike Tyson. <laughs> but like I said, you know what the deal was, guys. You were supposed to arrest me. Why didn't you? Were you scared? See, guys, what they fear is that I have a gift for being able to take a complicated subject and make it so you can understand it, regardless of your uh, level of um, uh, what you call that. Uh, yeah. You know what, Lakeside Justice, 
blow me. You know what? You're a piece of shit. I, I'm glad to see you because I want to block you. I've seen you. I've seen you running your suck hole all over Facebook, or I mean, all over uh, well, Facebook and YouTube about me, right? You used to be a member here. You're a piece of shit, Lakeside. You are. You're nothing but a piece of shit. And I've seen you talk about my wife too. Okay. Fuck you, Lakeside. Fuck you and your stupid asses. You are clown shoes. Goodbye, Lakeside. I made a huge mistake yesterday, stupid. No, no, no. They made a huge mistake yesterday because you didn't get me. You didn't get me. You left me out here. Now you ain't going to have another chance to get me. And here's the thing, guys. They said, oh, we'll get him out of the courthouse. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think I want to spend my days, my early spring days in a stuffy courthouse, sitting here, having to go to the bathroom and not being able to leave the courtroom? I'm going to miss something. I got to try and listen. What are they saying? Have have uh, Judge Gold mumbling all the time. Trying to, what? 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 Nah, you can't keep me from the street outside the courthouse, guys. You know, where the press sets up. And you know something else? I do my best work in the street. See, that's where you messed up. I made a huge mistake yesterday. No, no, Lakeside. They made a huge mistake. Because I do better work in the street. You done messed up. You let me into my zone. Don't let me into my zone. Don't let me into my zone. You put me in my zone. Fanny Dooley. Yes, I remember Fanny Dooley. Yes. Fanny Dooley loves vanilla. But she hates chocolate. Uh, Dean, they, they have the right, if they think I am going to cause a disturbance, they have the right to tell me that I can't be there unless I have a subpoena. They can. You know, but guys, all of you that are saying I caused a disturbance inside the courthouse, uh-uh, did not. Nope. I didn't do a damn thing inside the courthouse. I got kicked out. Now, see, that's the thing. Everybody's saying he caused a disturbance and got kicked out. Uh uh. That's not what happened. That is not what happened. I got kicked out. Then I caused the disturbance. I told Noe, I'm going to I'm hurt you, dude. I'm going to hurt you. Okay. And if things hadn't gone the way they did, Noe and I were supposed to be meeting somewhere in private where we could have it out. And I'd beat his ass and then I'd leave him there. And he'd like, you know, when he came to, he would probably find his cell phone and call somebody and say, can you take me to the hospital and stuff like that. But neither one of us get in trouble. See, but you know what? That's not what my plan was. Do I know what my plan was? My plan was for Noe to really get to the to decide that, oh, yeah, he's going to go somewhere and he's going to call me and tell me to meet him there. And then I was going to call him when I was halfway home and go, yeah, I was just messing with you, man. I'm on my way home. So then he would know what it feels like to want to beat somebody's ass and not be able to get their hands on him. But then I realized. I realized. Um, Noe is terrified of me. And you can see it. The, the video with the Kung Fu fighting. Watch that video, guys. Watch that video. What do I do? Where are my hands? Where are my hands? Do I ever like swing at him or, you know, Noe went like that. And I just stood there. 
where are my hands down here or in my pockets? Okay. I'm just walking and making him back up. He's like looking away from me, trying to get away from me. He gets away from me. I start walking away. What's he do? <laughs> starts running his mouth again. So I start walking up to him and bumping with my chest. And he pissed his pants. Look, look. <laughs> he pissed his pants. <laughs> he was so scared. I mean, when I charged at him, there were a couple of times when I left the courthouse after he threw me out, he's standing over here. I walk out, I'm looking for some press to talk to. And I look and I see, no, he's standing there. And I went, I locked eyes with him and I headed straight for him. And he was like, stay away from me, Rick. You stay away from me. And he kept doing it louder, you know, like Eddie Murphy. You know who you're messing with in cell number four on the fourth floor. You know? <laughs> That's the way he was. You can see it. You can see it. You know, he was being a big, you know, trying to be a big badass. And then he does that. And I walk up to him real fast, like I'm going to punch him. And I just bump him. And he pissed himself. <laughs> Gail, who said something about Kathy? Did somebody say something about Kathy? Guys, um, if you talk shit about Kathy Allen in here, you're gone. Period. You talk shit about my wife, you're gone. You talk shit about Rick's wife, you're gone. Period. See ya. No fucking around. I will shut that shit down. No exceptions. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we know what we're talking about, don't we? <laughs> All right, guys. Um, now, oh, before I go, I wanted to tell you my idea for the Patreon thing, okay? Here, let me go back here real quick. Um, now, put the Salucci notebook. Yes, this is it. Okay. Now, the Patreon, I have the mission statement written out. Here we go. I know it's in here. Hey there, baby. What are you doing? What are you doing? I know this is the right one. <laughs> I'll find it in a second. Here. But, uh... I have the mission statement written out. I have a, a seven-day um, plan. Maybe this isn't the one. I have a seven-day plan written out for what the uh, a week in the uh, um, Patreon might look like. Okay, I, here it is. Okay. The mission statement is uh, the importance of context has been purposefully cast aside as we embrace alternative facts. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own reality. There is one truth and it is discernible. For too long, people have been afraid to show any inclination to work on sharing ideas for fear of being chased out of their circle. Um, our goal is to create an online community where that doesn't happen because we respect each other and each other's opinions. Um, and that's what this is going to be about. So, oh, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, that's what this is going to be about. Um, and now here's what I've got. Say, Sunday, we would have, say, an evening call-in show called What's On Your Mind? Just you call in and say, you know what's on my mind? And we talk about it. Anything. You know, antifreeze in the car, which one's the best? You know. <laughs> um, Monday. Monday is for Delphi After Dark. And that is our flagship uh, show. Like, you know, WWE Raw, you know, Monday night, Delphi After Dark. That's our slot. 
So we will be having Delphi After Dark on the Patreon. We will also still be having Delphi After Dark on the uh, YouTube channel. Um, Tuesday. We're going to have Tuesday. is going to be two for Tuesday. We're going to have two shows. We'll have one in the midday and one in the evening. And one of those two is going to be a call-in. Um, I haven't decided yet what topics those are going to be or whatever. Wednesday is going to be my Mount Rushmore. And it will be in the evening. Um, midday. Uh, Thursday is going to be Midday True Crime, where we're going to talk about, we'll talk a little bit about Delphi, probably. We'll talk about other, you know, other cases and stuff. Okay. Um, Friday, we're going to have Midday TGIF. This is going to be uh, kind of a nostalgia show, especially for the gray hairs. Uh, we'll talk a lot about, you know, what it was like when we were kids, the 80s, Saturday morning cartoons, things like that. Um, it'll just be fun, you know. Now, for now, the pub is going to take, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to have to work around my pub schedule. But maybe at some point in the future, I won't need to work at the pub anymore. Saturday, we're going to have midday Delphi updates. And we're going to have probably a sports talk show. And we will probably have an early evening call-in show of some kind. So um, that's what this is going to be. You know, that's... Um, Patreon is going to be something that's going to be a full-time thing. It's going to be a weekly thing. I'll be putting up a blog post um, for people to read. And um, I will be, uh, you know, we'll have question and answer type stuff. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, yeah, I'm going to be super busy. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it is. I'm going to do, it's going to be a full-time thing. Um, I'm going to have to really regiment my time. Um, because I got to remember to get some time with these guys. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some fun. And you'll get to see a different side of me. And, uh, you know, we'll see how far that goes. <laughs> um, anyway, all right. We are going to kind of it out for now. But um, thank my mods. Thank you so much to my mods. Um uh, Pisces, we're going to be working on getting you your wrench, getting you uh, up to speed, and getting you into the mod chat on Discord. Um, I am also, I'll probably be working with uh, you, Guitarista. We're, we're going to work on um, punching up the mission statement a little bit. Also, I want to, uh, you know, get kind of a, an outline thing done. So we'll, we'll talk about it as we go. Um, but man, um, we're going to have some fun. This is going to be fun. This is going to be great. We're going to love it. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. But yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for coming by. And uh, thank you for your support. Um, you know, it's easy to sit and criticize. It really is. Um, it's easy for you to sit there and say, I made a big mistake, or I'm stupid, or I'm crazy, and I got thrown out, and I couldn't control myself. Guys, if I couldn't control myself, no, he would be in the hospital. And I mean that. Come on. If I really couldn't control myself, I would have hurt him severely yesterday. Because he said some horrible things. When you have somebody get online and say about you, I heard that the reason his daughter, Serenity, won't talk to him is because he molested her. When you have somebody say something like that about you, they deserve to get the living shit kicked out of them. And I don't know if I ever planned to do it, but I wanted him to think I did. And like I said, now I don't, I'm done. Now, if he wants some, he's going to have to come to me and he can walk over, but he's going to limp back. <laughs> All right, everybody, you know what the deal is, right? I still donate to Lucci's House Bully Breed Rescue Program, and they're fantastic, and I love them, and you will too. You know what? I am going to talk to Lori about doing a weekly show uh, about the dogs, What will, you know, uh, featuring a different dog each week or something. I go there, you know, film, you know, the dogs and stuff and take them out for a walk and you know, things like that. So I want to do a weekly Lucci show. So one of those things might be a weekly Lucci show. 
And so I'm going to talk to Lori about doing it, but they're great. Um, they are my favorite charity. Uh, they do fantastic work with uh, these dogs and they need it. Um, bully breeds are so misunderstood and they get them their medical help and get them their shots and get them training and things like that. They try to find fosters and adopters. So if you can be a foster, great. If you can be an adopter, even better. Um, if you can support them financially, huzzah. <laughs> if you can't, no big deal. Share their posts, like them, comment on them, give them some interaction, and that helps the algorithms, puts them up on more people's pages. So that's how you can help me out. You know, And like I said, if you decide you want to donate, you can donate directly to them. Um, or you can donate in the chat and just put on their luchies, um, like somebody did, the $10 one um, a little bit ago. You say that, I write them down in the book, and at the end of the month, I send them to luchies. So, um, but we will uh, be getting back together again very soon. I, you know, tomorrow, because of my schedule coming up, I think I'm probably going to have another live tomorrow. It might be in the afternoon. I'm not sure. Um, if it is, it's going to be like either really early afternoon, like we're talking like one, or it's going to be like five or so. Most likely it'll be like early evening. So, or it could be early, lid, early mid, late evening. So, <laughs> Steve Martin, back in, see how many of you remember that. Anyway, so yeah, Lucci's house, guys, um, they the best. All right, so I will probably be back tomorrow. Um, and like I say, guys, you're going to hear a lot of complaining. You're going to hear a lot of people saying, you know, how stupid I am, how crazy I am. I'm a child. It's not about me. I'm trying to make it about me. I'm doing to me, 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 to me. Um, but you know what? How many of you that are criticizing me would have had the cojones to walk into that courthouse yesterday? You wouldn't have. I did. I knew I was going to get thrown out. No matter what happened yesterday, they were going to get rid of me. There's no way they were going to let me be in there for that trial. My mouth too big. I draw too much attention to myself. I'm a lightning rod. See, while you're messing around with the clown, people like Angela and Courtney over at the Unraveling are doing the real work. HCC is laying the pipe. I didn't mean it that way. Yeah, we get, you know, we're doing the work. So you guys laugh at the clown all you want. You know, laugh at the silly clown. Look at him. I don't care. I like making people laugh. So you laugh at me all you want. <laughs> but while you're laughing at me, remember what happens when Richard Allen is acquitted and then they say, well, shoot, looks like we have to go after the guys that actually did this. You guys are going to owe me a lot of apologies. I'll never see him. I will talk to you guys tomorrow, but until I do remember, as always, I wish you peace, love, leather, base, best. See you later, folks.